dabei. Feier. Feier. <lacht> It's episode 68. Look what, I have, look what I have put out. This little, tr I love these. You can still get these if others of you are looking at this going, where can you get one? Um, eBay. There's a bunch. Yes. And I have a white one downstairs. I think I like the white better. I do because it, the bulbs are brighter, but I like the green because it reminds me of my aunt who's passed away, but she always had one. Yeah, she never had anything real. I'm not a fan of a fake actual tree, but I was a fan <laughs> of that. And to hang on that, look what Anheuser Bush has sent me for Christmas. Seriously, out of nowhere. St. Louis Anheuser Bush sent me this, a t shirt. I don't have it on because I haven't watched it. And all those little Bud Light ornaments, which were. Be going somewhere, maybe on the deck. Nice. I don't know. And then this will go right there like that. <laughs> Classy. <laughs> That's a third of the size of the truck. I know. <laughs> um, but my uncles worked at the brewery in St. Louis forever. They were all pipe fitters. Um, my dad worked down there before he became a lawyer. So shout out to Anheuser-Busch. Um, yeah, just random. It just arrived. I didn't ask for nothing. I'm not sponsored, but <clears throat> I'm not saying I'd turn one down, Anheuser-Busch. <laughs> Come on, St. Louis born and bred. Come on, what's not to love? I do cuss sometimes, so they might not like that. I don't know. What do they care, right? They'd be a I'm great sure, sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. I'd quit cussing for that. Really? Yeah. Wow. I don't have to cuss. <laughs> I like to, but I mean, it's not part of what's really? necessary. I'm even drinking out of a bottle. I bought this at Deerberg's, FYI, and as a bush. I didn't get this one free. This six pack was like 13 bucks for oh, these glasses. They're free. Yeah, well, I wanted to get them for my friend Drew because he loves a bug cold Bud Light because he would always say in L.A., hey, do you care if I come over to your house for a cup of coffee? I'm like, what are we, 100? I know what you're coming over here for. <laughs> a, how about a cup of tea? Hmm? We'll get a scone. No, he'd always, if he was having a rough day, he'd sneak over. Because who else is off except self-employed people at 2 o'clock ready to have a Bud Light? Right. This lady. I don't know why this is here. So many things, termites. So many things, so many awesome things. First of all, where have I been? I was in West Virginia. West Virginia. Uh, the casino, super duper fun. You guys were great. Uh, then, because um, of COVID makeup shows and my agents don't, mm, I think, own a map and we know what we're going to do for Christmas, we're going to get them a giant one that works like the game of operation. And if they put a routing that's bad, the whole wall's going to go. Eh. Then flew to California and went to Monterey and Napa and Sacramento. So many good things. I got this. I got a lot of wine. Yeah. Saddleback. And I honestly, I'm going to be totally honest. I gave the opening act a couple bottles because I couldn't get it all home. Um, well, one and a half. I drank half. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, hey, I don't know, Michael. Do you want it? Um, shout out to you people who saw the shows. And Michael Palasek was the opening. I did very funny. But look at this. This is from the Peacock Vineyards. Look at the label. I'm a label whore. I'm the hack lady that pretty. they have meetings about. So they'll go, do you think, now look at this lady. And then there's my headshot. Yeah. Do you think she would like this label? Would this make her buy it? Because I don't know enough about wine to know right. what I'm doing. Yes, it would. You go by color. It's classy. I like the colors. And it's a Pinot because I have allergies to a lot of the rest. But now that I have the tools the termites have sent me to put the little wands in there, it works. So we'll put that front and center. And then what am I drinking? This was left for me by a termite backstage. I do get most of the things in Napa. This was left in Napa. It's called Basic Bitch Blonde Ale. And it's in that glass. And it's really good. But I don't know how they got away with this can. I mean, it looks like Starbucks. Starbucks yeah. I think somebody would be revolting saying, the children think they're buying a ma matcha latte. Da, da, da. <laughs> and it's not. It's a beer. I mean, I don't care, but your can's fine with me, but I'm surprised there wasn't a little hoopty high on that. Um, I got so many cards, so many stuff back, so much stuff backstage. Funny stuff. Um, somebody, <laughs> just this little pin made me laugh. I'm going to give it uh, to one of my nieces and then see if they can wear it to school and how soon they'll be kicked out. It says, you're, <laughs> you are a goddamn magical unicorn. I love nice, it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And then, okay, this is the empty envelopes. Just going to do a shout out to some termites who left stuff. Shout out to Donna from Pleasanton. Um, appreciate it. 
Saddleback Wineries, Sellers, Sellers, sorry. That was Angie, I think. Shout out, Angie. Grace, I'm only going to say, no, I won't say. I always say I won't say last names, but the last name's funny because whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, uh, yeah, she got the ranch bottle. She tried to find a ranch bottle. She gave me a little golf cart ornament. Got that. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's all very great. Very, very nice stuff backstage. <laughs> it's, it's always funny when the security guard's like, the one guy was, he was super old somewhere. I don't remember what venue. And somebody brought like ranch or something. He goes, oh, ma'am, you've received some uh, items from fans and it's food. I don't suggest you eat it. Like he's trying to get all security. I go, "What? It, let me see it. And it, it was just ranch bottles. I'm like, I think we can tell whether somebody busted it in uh, to the ranch is trying to trick me. This is an invitation for golf, which was very nice. Um, yeah, I couldn't do it this time. And it was pretty cold out there in Ca Northern California. Yeah. yeah, that's not what they show us in the movies. Not when you're in the Midwest. This is Nicole. You went to Pebble Beach. I went to Pebble Beach. I didn't play golf. There were, I went on that beach. I love the beach. If you ever see the golf tournament on TV, you see a beach below there. That's Carmel Beach, you technically. Did I did a video from there. I love that it's dog friendly. I don't even have a dog. But I just like seeing all the dogs go crazy and run. They're so happy. Yeah. I've never seen a dog fight. Like, nobody's fighting. Um, and the waves are crazy, violent. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, I prefer Northern California over Southern California. It reminds me of more of Ireland. And it's not as, uh, I don't know, it's not, not quite, as, quite as crowded. My friend Lorene came, the woman who directed what? Bothering Jesus. <laughs> Lorene, smartest friend I have probably. No paddles. <laughs> mm, sorry, no. Because you're smart, but Lorene puts nerd on top of it, and then that's that's <laughs> dynamic duo of okay. nothing gets you're past right. Lorene. Things get past you, paddles. They Let's do, just yeah. admit that. <laughs> yeah. You didn't yeah, even yeah. trust me hanging these Bud Light ornaments no, on this desk. No. no. They're gonna um, down. <laughs> this made me laugh. This came from a termite. And where? Des Moines. I'll be going there in 2022. Um. <laughs> It's a Bigfoot ornament. No way. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. It's um it's probably not the highest quality you could find, <laughs> but it's the thought that counts and it's actually very soft. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Um oh, well. <laughs> a couple more of these things and then we'll be moving on uh to actual things. Um yeah, I don't know what that one. I think I did that one last time. This was the card though, and it's I never can say the word right. Abominable snowman. Abominable, right? This is from Allison. So, Alan, I got your. I, Allison, I got it. Oh, they're gonna come to Seattle. Cool. Why? I'm coming to Des Moines. I'm coming to Des Moines, which I believe means in French the the, the teachers. What? No, look up. It means like not the father. It'd be the pair. Uh, the monks, yeah, because they started. Um, yeah, Des Moines. People don't even think of it as Midwest Same. people don't think of it as French. Smart. I took French in high school. Smart. Smart. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing. Oh my God. I got to show you. I know if you're listening, it won't make any sense. Just bear with me. But this woman sent this. Oh man, hold on, I don't remember. Angie from Bloomington, Indiana, with a very nice letter. And she makes these things. And this is. This is everything that I've ever done in my life. Whoa, it's my sister. God damn it. It was so loud, right? What are you doing for Christmas? I know. I can't. If I get the one call. What are you doing? What's everybody doing? Why can't anybody in this family make a plan? God damn it. That's the Christmas spirit. God damn it. Um, everything I like and everything I've ever done is on this thing. Like, there's Dolly Parton, there's me and Lou. The, there's Mama Termite. Shoo, buddy. That's Ron's, but I like saying it. There's Ron. Um, my CD, little, they're emblems and cardinals. Everything. This should just be passed around at my funeral that people go, yeah, I didn't really know her. <laughs> just pass this around and go, oh, look at all the stuff she liked. Uh, she liked Happy Hour. She like Las Vegas, yes. Uh, Peaches Records from St. Louis, yes. Yeah, Cardinals, so. some sort of. Oh, my mom's All Star pills. This is like a piece of art. Yeah. 
I mean, this is not, I wouldn't even, I'm going to put it in the office. I'm not drinking out of it. Is a coffee. Um, it says tumbler care. It's a tumbler. Don't soak. Don't microwave. Handmade with care. Please handle with care. I will. Beer mug. Thank you. No. Well, yeah, you could put beer in it. I'd feel safe with that. All right. So that's all that business. There's a lot more stuff too, Thomas. I can't get to it all because I don't want to bore you guys with just. But I think everybody that brings something should get a shout out or send something, and I'm trying. But I don't want to overload it with all that. So, um, what are we eating? Well, we already did what we're drinking. What are we eating? Well, I think everybody should know, just because it's festive, Hidden Valley Ranch, yeah, they have a holiday bottle. (laughs) It's just regular ranch, but it's a holiday bottle. I like it. It's pretty. I know. It's very pretty. And then if you have people over, if you want to be a fancy Midwest person, and you want to, you could just put your bottle out (laughs) like that and go, yeah. It doesn't even cost any extra money, but it just adds a little flair to your hors d'oeuvre table. Yeah. All right. Now, very. this could be interesting. I could like this. I love a Kit Kat. Who doesn't love a Kit Kat? Gingerbread cookie Kit Kats. This is a, kind of in the holiday spirit. Also, I have procured the KFC uh, fire log, but it's out in the garage. I forgot to bring it up. I will show you termites next week. And I've burnt one outside. And yeah. So great. Nice. The fireplace in my house is gas because I'm lazy. So, but I have an outdoor fire pit. Uh, Kit Kat gingerbread. I see. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Cool. I think at the end of the day, I'd rather have a Kit Kat or a gingerbread cookie. But gingerbread cookies are goddamn hard to find. I don't know what's happened there. Every Hallmark movie shows sure. 20 million of them like they're a dime a dozen. They have them nowhere. Nope. So this would be a good second. My mom would really like those. All right. And then this, we're going to try this. Ranch blasted dipping sauce. That was also left, I think. Yes, the termite left this somewhere up in California. Yeah. yeah. This was not a West Virginia deal. This was Cal- Wow. West Virginia don't get no fancy. <laughs> they don't get no blasted ranch. <laughs> It's only an hour outside of D.C. People forget, because we cut through Maryland or somewhere to get there. I don't remember. It was beautiful, though. The drive was beautiful, and I thought, fuck, why don't I live here? I think that a lot on the road, but I like where I live. All right. I would not come. Blasted, dipping, zesty. Wow. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) They're not kidding when they talk about zesty. Holy bing bong. Wow, that makes the back of your eyeballs spin a little. Really? I liked it, though. I'm having another bite, and then I'll move on to oh real work. Gosh, well. well, I haven't had lunch. <laughs> and I had yogurt. I need to lose five pounds before I go on Kelly Clarkson's show. <laughs> I am going to go on Kelly Clarkson's show. Yeah, I sit there as I eat blasted ranch out of a fucking paper bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yes, I will be on there in January. I don't know. I'm going to go. I don't know when they air. I don't know if they air the same day or whatever. I haven't checked all that. Um, but I need to. I need to smarten up and look right. Okay. <laughs> Fly <Yeah>. right. <laughs> what a horrible time to go. I gotta lose five pounds by this day. It's Christmas. Oh, give you a tan. No, I just need to bring somebody super fat with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of fat comedian friends. I'll bring one of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all we're eating. I think you should know about that ranch bottle. I like it a lot. I'm going to give that to my mom. Then she can act like she did something. Who knows if she doesn't give a shit. She'd leave for Florida right now. She wouldn't even participate in Christmas because they're back in Missouri. And they wait till the day after Christmas because my dad likes the traditions. And my mom? Uh uh-uh. uh. Could care. No. no. Could care less. Did you guys have a good Christmas? K okay, bye. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Okay, mm. bye. Oh, oh, I forgot to taste these. Then I'll stop. Okay. okay, do you guys know about Wisp? No. Well, this is the reason they were kind of a big hit, and I like them. They only have three grams of carbs okay. per yeah. serving, well, and they're gluten-free for my sister, who really does have a gluten thing. It's not bullshit like the new fangled people. 
Snacking straight out of the bag. Adding to your soups, salads, appetizer plate. Now, they have Parmesan ones of these that are great. I mean, like, addictive. And I would suggest if you're flying anywhere over the holidays, bring your own food because otherwise you're going to be entered into what I call this week Delta's Intermittent Fasting Program. <laughs> I'm like, come on, this is a five-hour no. flight? No, they gave me a snack box, and I love Delta. I am loyal to Delta. The snack box would have been a home run if it was given to my dad really? or a nine-year-old. <laughs> yeah, Oreos. What? Yeah, a beef jerky stick. That's the only thing I ate. Uh, potato chips, my dad would have gotten upset they weren't Lay's, but he'd deal with it. Uh, sea salt something. Yeah, and I like potato chip, but I'm like, you know, I don't want it to be fancy, but we could have done better. Yeah. Just saying, Delta Delta, can I help you, help you? Um, this is Wisped Tangy Ranch. I've never seen this kind. They have all kinds of kind, and they're all good. So, they're a little pricey, though, for what you get. No, they're not for children. Bad enough you guys spend all your money on cereal for those little people. Mm. It doesn't taste like ranch. It tastes like the rest of them. Cheese. It tastes like fake cheese. I like cheese. On a thin chip that's sort of almost hollow but crunchy. I love Wisp. Shout out to Wisp, but that's bullshit. Yeah. Maybe their children taste it. All right, moving on. Update! This is so sad. We're not going to have a sad holiday episode, but it's an update. City of St. Louis settled their lawsuit with the Stan goddamn Cronky for seven, and the NFL for $790 million. They could have gotten so much more. This is a chicken shit move. The trial... The, the NFL would have done anything not to be exposed. This also agrees to destroy all the documents. It, they got off cheap. They have no problem coming up with $790 million. No. Zero. Nope. And they all, they all said, I'm not going to read the whole article because it's boring if you don't care about sports, but this is about the Rams leaving St. Louis and then after we promised them another new stadium mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, and they just ran away in the middle of the night, and you're not allowed to do that. It's not the NFL laws. It's not the, city, the agreement the city – and this could happen anywhere – just telling everybody, this is not a Hallmark movie that ends well. Uh, nope. This is all about the Rams leaving back in the day, and um, they said we were never considered for an expansion team because that was part of our maybe, hey, maybe you could float us a team again. Right. No. And I think it's because the city of St. Louis, they would argue, doesn't have enough money, and by money, sure. they mean corporate box sales, which is just horseshit. All right, so that's just a sad little update, but that was it. Now, I did read, what are we going to do with the $790 million? You know what I say, education. We already have casinos, paddles. Know, but you guys like casinos. St. Louis has so many casinos. Right. Uh, there's so many, we can't decide where to gamble sometimes. Should we go to Harris? Should we go to Ameristar? Oh, we could go South City. We'll go down South. That one I've won a lot of money at. We could go across the river to the Casino Queen. Too many choices. No. I say we become the education city, and then people move there because all people care about is that their kids are the smartest kids on the block, unlike my parents, who uh, didn't really even realize what we were doing. Don't care. No, no, don't care. Update! Okay. That just is pathetic. I'm just saying, whoever made the decision in St. Louis, you could have held out for a lot more. Right. $790 million is nothing to them. Nothing, nothing, nothing. They're all billionaires. Yep. They're mobsters, and they just hijacked us for the second time. Right. They don't want their shit shown. The other NFL owners, I did get some inside scoop that a couple of the owners told Cronky to go fuck himself. But, really? yeah, I can't say where I learned that. But, um, <laughs> top secret, and I know it's right. I know it's true. Um <sighs> But I don't think they had as much to expose as some of the others. <coughs> Jerry Jones. <laughs> Square-headed little thing, Jerry Jones. Update! You're going to be happy, Paddles. Okay. The Elizabeth Holmes trial is ending. Yeah! It's winding down. Oh, and she took the stand for days on end. Elizabeth Holmes caps her testimony with a round of denials. And, oh, and, and, oh, I forgot to do my queen news, too. First of all. All of, Why did you think of that when you thought of Elizabeth Holmes? Because she's I, not a queen. She is not a queen. But I thought because Lorene, mm -hmm. my 
smartest friend of all people right. sent me a text saying, um, Jennifer Lawrence is going to play Elizabeth Holmes in, um, but I forget what it's called. It's about her. And it, mm -hmm. I don't even know what channel, whatever, but it's all been signed unsealed. And then I thought of actor people. And then I thought, what about, I forgot to say Cher has a new lotion. What? It's on HSN. Yeah. But you can get it. You could, I Googled it. Yeah. And Dolly's stuff is all sold out. All of it. The advent calendar. I've already busted into that. The William Sonoma stuff. So you missed out. Next time, what's the moral story? Get on that earlier. And Stevie, oh, listen to this. The, on, the ongoing fight between Stevie and Lindsay, he is such a whiny little bitch. Yeah. Even if these things are true that he says, don't say them. You just sound like a whining little, forget about her. Because right. I, I think she probably... Probably can be a pain in the ass. Probably. Probably mm -hmm. Right? Like, I don't think Tanya could, is a pain in the ass. I think right. she can just saddle up her own horse and ride out of town and not right. give a shit. Give her a pack of cigs and send her on her way. Mm -hmm. Dolly, self-starter, no problem. She doesn't need other people. Cher does whatever she wants. This one's part of a team. Yeah. And yeah. she might be a little cuckoo. Brilliant. I don't think cuckoo. Brilliant. But I think it's her, sometimes it's her way or the highway. But guess who's the most popular? That one. This lady. Yeah. Right. So guess whose highway we're going on? This lady. <laughs> or or find another band where you're the you're the popular one, Lindsay. Yeah. Go ahead. Listen to what he said. He's so mean. Like if I was her, well, I would the, the high road is to just ignore it. Right. And I know this is just gossip. But it never ends with these two. Because yeah. he'll comment, then the LA Times will call her for a comment on his comments. And it's all out in public. Just pick up the phone and say, fuck off. End it. Right. End it. Lindsey Buckingham blames Stevie Nicks for the lack of new music from Fleetwood Mac. 18 years, he says. It's all her fault. Oh, my God. <laughs> or as wow. they say at the Nashville Predator Games, it's all yeah. your fault. It's all yeah. your fault. Yeah. <laughs> when the other goalie doesn't stop a goal, they all chant. That makes me laugh. It's so juvenile. Yeah, um, this is terrible. He told Classic Rock Magazine that the fact that the legendary rock band hasn't released a studio album since 2003, Say You Will, that was that album, wasn't for lack of trying. Um, uh, he, he was fired early, we know that. No, no, no. We know that. Uh, we know that he, she fired him, according to him, and she said, no, I just said I don't want to work with him, so what do you want to do? There you go. I had a bunch of songs. Mick had a bunch of songs. John and I went in with the producer... Mitchell from and a bunch of stuff. The review, this was before Christine returned to the band. Um, listen to this. He claims that Nick has, Nick's has gotten, uh, has sort of gotten a little bit disoriented in her wanting to pursue Stevie Nicks in capital letters, if you will. <gasps> disoriented. That's saying you're old yeah. and crazy. He's yeah. trying to say you're old and crazy and you only care about Stevie. Maybe all that's true. Stop saying, talking about it. Right. I think she lost track of her writing a little bit. 18 years, you lost track completely. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a little bit. And maybe she didn't think she had anything she felt she could offer and so did not want to be part of it. Wow. Oh, my God. He just, he's on a, he's on a, like, I, call, I look at his thing that he calls a tour. I'd call it a mini tour, but yeah. whatever. Um, so he's doing media. Every step of the way, every podcast, it's all brand new to him because Pawpaw's never been on all these podcasts. So boom, 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 round one. And he is just mouthing off. Like, just keep talking about your album. Keep talking about yeah. your stuff. Like, anyway, I f forgot all that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get over it. I don't think I'll be buying Cher's lotion because I have allergies to chemical things like that. But I would be interested to see what it smelled like. Maybe I'll get one. It's okay. only like $35 or okay. something. Okay, we'll get it. We'll sample it. Yeah. Um, for the uh, for six day for the six days that Elizabeth Holm, the founder of the failed blood testing startup Theranos, took the stand at her fraud trial, she blamed others, accused a former boyfriend of abusing and controlling her. He she blamed him for the, her voice. Oh. Yeah, she said that he told her, "You had a you know your real voice is too high and you don't sound 
I don't know, whatever, convincing or mm. whatever. So, but I mean, bullshit. Yeah. You know what? If he controlled you, it's just, a, this is just a narcissist going wild, blaming everybody. She's the victim, blah. It's so, ugh, tiring. She, um, she capped her defense one fun with flat denials. I don't think I did that. She said in response to a question yeah. what, whether she had been minimized the findings of a devastating regulatory inspection at Theranos. She then blamed her company's lawyer for doing a lot of talking at that meeting. <laughs> it's to, the comments ended her main testimony, which stood out for the rarest of rarities. Few technologies, executives, let alone a female executive, are ever, in char- ever charged with criminal fraud. Even fewer take the stand to defend them, defend themselves. Her time on the stand, which is likely formally finished on Wednesday, was the climax of the trial. Um, I think this is going to help her. Good. Well, I knew she'd do it. There's not a narcissist on the planet that's going to let that chance go by and just sit there. True. Unless every lawyer in the world has spent all of their time convincing them. Because they always think they're the smartest person in the room, no come hell or high water, True. smarter than the lawyers, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, she wasn't going to let that show go go by. They've called dozens of witnesses since September, including former BARD members, lab directors, employees, witnesses spent hours on the stand. Prosecutors must convince the jury that Mrs. Holmes knew about the problem and failed to disclose them to the people pouring money into Theranos and to the patients relying on the blood test. In her defense... Lawyers, Holmes, uh, Mrs. Holmes' lawyers tried showing that witnesses' stories were more complicated than they had let on. No. One lady went in to get a blood test. I don't know why you'd get a blood test at Walgreens to begin with. I mean, right. what do you, what's going on? And they told her she had uh, not just HIV, AIDS. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Yeah. She sat obs- with a, 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 you couldn't see her expression because she had a mask on. Um she had a she had a million reasons why none of this was her fault. Every time she at, was asked, she pulled what in her line of question she would say she didn't recall. What's Jack Madigan say? Attorney at law, Jack Madigan. I do not recall. I and I need an attorney. Yeah. But she already had an attorney, so you stop it. I do not recall. But shit, that so email she sent. Did you send all these? Uh, I don't recall. Oh, come on now. I mean, it just went on and on and on. I think, though, the jury, I don't think they're going to find her not guilty. Um, I'd like to see if there's any Vegas betting on this. If I can, Is there anything on DraftKings available to bet on that? Because I bet they're going to find, yeah, guilty or not guilty. I think they're going to find her guilty on some of the accounts. I'd say her prison sentence will be three years or less. I'm just saying this is my bet. And she'll serve maybe under a year. You're good with some? Well, I want her to have the death penalty. (laughs) Paddles, you want everybody to have the death penalty. If it was up to you, that electric chair would run out of electricity. Your electricity bill would be so high. Yeah, yeah. Fry them, fry them, fry them. Well, we don't need that person anymore. Oh, okay. And I'm not necessarily anti-death penalty, but I certainly wouldn't have as high of an electric bill as you would. Let's put it that way. Just some bad people. I am the daughter of a defense attorney. Sometimes there's actual people that are innocent paddles. Update! No, she's not innocent. But you don't go to the you don't go to the death penalty for conning people out of money. She's a fraudster. We've covered this. She is a sociopath, and I don't think they should be allowed in society because they just prey on other people. Jail. <laughs> no, I'd put her somewhere and not not jail. That's too nice. I'd put her somewhere where she had to do work that we need. Like, you know, I'm not against putting her on a chain gang if we still have any. Pick up trash. Get your ass out there. Yeah, sitting on your ass watching TV in jail. That ain't fun. And you get to exercise and you get to, you know, computer. Do you get to use computers and stuff? All right, fine. But I think they should have to do something as well. Something that's productive for society that we need. Maybe they could dig the ditches and we could get some underground cables for our um, electrical poles. You've got to get off that. I'm, not, I'm never getting off of it. 
Why are all the, why do we still have power outages? Because telephone po- electrical poles are falling down and wires are crashing everywhere. All that shit should be underground. It's 2021. This is not very, Dig some. This is not a Christmas conversation. <laughs> it, it's not a Christmas conversation, Paddles, because you just said put somebody in the electric chair. Well, she you started it. it. She you went to the, uh, <laughs> moving on. See? Update. That's terrible. That was a good one. I did it good no, the first time. No. And then you cut it off. Could my airplane, <gasps> well, Asian Flight 370, oh. how many of you have seen Bothering Jesus? I talk a lot about it. I've Just because that special is over doesn't mean I've given up. I, I have a Google alert. Yes. Yep. And then a bunch of you helpful hamster um, termites sent me the article too, which I always appreciate everything that is sent to me on Twitter because sometimes I do miss stuff. Flying around and all that. I don't have time some days, and I, shit gets by me. Um, this one I also saw, too, because it was kind of, they kind of sent it out everywhere. <sighs> we all know it's one of the big, av- biggest aviation mysteries, but a British aeronautical engineer who has spent more than a year working on the disaster thinks he has calculated where MH370 crashed. <gasps> yep. Wow. It vanished from the radar. We know all that. He told the BBC, we hope to give closure to the next of kin and answers to the flying public. Yeah, that'd be this lady. We can just disappear. They don't talk about that in the flight instruction. No. No. In the event of a water landing, in the event you need to evacuate, they go, and in the event we disappear, (laughs) well, I don't know. Yeah. Hurry up and text your family. Um, This is what he did. He combined different data sets that were previously kept in separate domains to align to his new location in the southern Indian Ocean. Now, the problem is, problem is, southern Indian Ocean the waves can be 60 feet or higher. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. It's it's rough, rough water. At least that's what I've read. I've never been, you know, just saying what I've read. Mm-hmm. Mr. Godfrey said it was a complicated exercise. No shit. Yeah. Wow. No, that would actually make my brain turn to cottage cheese. It's already halfway there, but to have to do <laughs> something like this. Right. Um, but previously, there was a simply a lack of lateral thinking across multiple disciplines to bring this together. No one had the idea before to combine uh, satellite data with Boeing performance data with oceanographic floating debris drift data, meaning the crap they did find from the flight. I think it was from the flight. Okay. And with WSPR new data. See, here's the thing, Mr. Gottfried. I just read what you did, and I don't know what I said. <laughs> I don't even understand it. Sorry. Mr. Gottfried said he's worked with the team. His work with the team has been progressing for a year now. We've done quite a lot of testing on the new idea. We've come to confidence to apply it to MH370, uh, the exact point determined um, by data calculations is around 33 degrees south and 95 degrees east in the Indian Ocean. There have been two extensive searches in the Indian Ocean, which have yielded inconclusive results. Okay, I'm not going to go through all this because it gets very technical, but they need to raise the funds to go look. That's the problem. Because the people responsible for paying for searches would be the Malaysian government, and I don't think they want any of this solved. Really? No. Why? Because they want it to be over with. Yeah. And they want it to be done with. And they want to pay these families off, Malaysian Airlines, who you know is in on it with the government. And my dad would always say, you know, People accept first offers because to them it's a shitload of money. Mm-hmm. But in reality, it's not to the to people paying you, and it's not for what you, you deserve. Right. But, you know, do you want to sue them? It could take years and years and years and years. So I don't think they have any vested interest in, I think they all want, they just want to act like it didn't happen. Right. Denial at its finest. How great is this story? This would be a wonderful holiday accident. It's not an update. I only had three. Oh, good. I know. I don't know. Some some weeks there's not a lot. That's right. Dozens stuck in England's England's highest pub after storm. Oh, nice. This would be my Christmas Hallmark movie. <laughs> I would be so excited. Great. Uh, it's the highest altitude pub, and they got a longer stay than they bargained for after the building was cut off by a blizzard. Sixty one people woke up Monday after their third night. At the Tan Hill Inn, and there's a picture of it, um, at Yorkshire Dales, 270 miles north of London. They've been un- unable to leave since Friday when a late autumn storm brought snow and heavy winds and that felled power cables and blocked roads. The pub sits at 
1,732 feet above sea level and is used to being cut off by bad weather. Manager Nicole Townsend said the staff had organized movies, a quiz night, and even karaoke for the stranded guests. That's where I'd go, okay. Can we not do that one? Can we do two more quiz nights? Um, They've also been entertained by an Oasis cover band, Noasis, who have also been stuck at the pub since their gig on Friday night. Townsend said the guests were in really good spirits. As long as this place doesn't run out of liquor, I can stay there till the end. Yeah. Once once the liquor's gone, now you got to serious up and figure out how we getting out of here. Mm-hmm. They form quite a friend, friendship. It's like a big family. It's the best way I can describe it. One lady actually said, I don't want to leave. And that lady's name was Kathleen Madigan. <laughs> yeah. Townsend said she hoped the people would be able to head home Monday once the road has been cleared. How much fun would that be as an adult? Be to actually, but then you got to worry about my babysitter, you know, if, you, if, it was, if it was my brother and his wife or sister, uh-huh. They're not worried about their babysitter. Well, no. <laughs> it's December, and it hasn't snowed in Denver yet. Really? That's never been recorded. Uh, I know when people say there's nothing wrong with the weather. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I'm not going to have that bar argument, but Great. come on. Everything I read is always... Once in a hundred years. Well, it can't just be once in a hundred years if we're doing it every other goddamn Thursday or never been recorded. Well, it's been recorded now. Snowless in Colorado. No, this. Oh, God. Who wrote this? CNN. Stop it. Snowless in Colorado. No, this is not a follow up to the Tom Hanks movie Sleepless in Seattle. Yeah, that was somebody really thought that was clever. But rather than a real life drama unfolding across the state. Uh, real life drama. This is very real life consequences. It's been 224 consecutive days and counting since it snowed a measurable mountain Denver, and it has broken the record for the latest date for its first snowfall, a record that has held snowfall records since they began in 1882. Wow. Mm-hmm. They postpone skiing and stuff. I mean, crazy. yeah, the, re- the, the rest of this gets into serious ass weather, but um, I'm just pointing out, um, it's, it's yeah, Canada's got tons of snow, yep. full-on blizzards. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, think if you're the Colorado ski resorts. Bad. It's very bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Thanksgiving weekend's supposed to be a hoop to And there's a big thing in there how they can make a certain amount of fake snow, but you can't, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I, 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 this next story is I, 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 Joel Osteen. Uh, 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 Joel, uh, it, the preacher, uh, are you familiar? Uh, in Houston? Wouldn't open his uh, uh, his uh, his uh, uh, any of his facilities for people in the flood, but Matt, guess who did? Mattress Mac. Right. Yeah. Good man. I'll stop doing does that. Does not deserve the death penalty. I love it when George Wallace does it. When he makes fun of Joel, and there he's friends with him. I'm not. And what's Good. what's going on here, Joel? A plumber. And I actually do have an update on this story that I just read before I started this. A plumber doing repair work at Pastor Joel Olstein's Lakewood Church found hundreds of envelopes of cash and checks hidden in a wall the police think is connected to a massive 2014 theft at the Houston megachurch. Officers were called to the church on November 10th to investigate the discovery, according to a statement from the Houston Police Department. You don't even want to know what I think. Because <laughs> it, I can only say it's an opinion so I don't get sued. But if you were that much of a robbery this is the problem with cash too everything else is going cashless like right. if you work in bars with cash you know all these things that go on that if he reports that and collects that insurance money because mm-hmm. he's filling out a police report to say it's gone right. <clears throat> come on now mm-hmm. church members stated that a reno- during a renovation project a large amount of money including cash checks and money orders was found inside a wall I think they forgot about it I think they did it. I mean, who else would... A secretary? I've heard of secretaries stealing, like, from comedy clubs or whatever. Not, I don't know whatever you would call it. Night manager, or drop, yeah. drop manager, whatever. I think they forgot. Police said the evidence was recovered. Checks suggest that the envelopes are connected to the March 9th, 2014 theft of undeclosed amounts of money from the church. CNN reported that at the time, about 600 grand to 200 grand in cash and 400 grand in checks was taken from a church safe. 
The money came from contributions given on March 8th and 9th of 2014. Burglary and theft officers inventory and documented the recovered money and left it in a custody of the church because it was property found on its premise. They confirmed the discovery in a statement to CNN, but it did not provide information. Recently, while repaired, this guy called a radio station. What? Yeah. News of the find became public when a man who identified himself as the plumber called into the Houston radio show 100.3 The Bull. I don't think I've ever been on that. I've been on most radio stations at one time or another. I don't recognize that. Um, and he shared the story with the morning bullpen. There was a loose toilet in the wall, and we removed tile, went to go remove the toilet, and it moved some insulation away, and about 500 envelopes fell out of the wall, and I was like, oh, wow. The caller said he contacted the maintenance supervisor and turned the money in. Yeah. Um, I wish we had a video of our faces because we were all just like, holy cow. He could have stashed this money in his pocket and walked out and never said anything, the, the, the plumber guy, but he was honest and a stand-up kind of guy. Uh, Houston crime stoppers had offered twenty five grand for information relating, leading to an arrest in the case, but the organization said that the money is no longer available because the statute of limitations has expired in the case. No. Well, that's horseshit. Oh, yeah. And guess who didn't give him a dime? Uh, 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 Joel. <laughs> and then uh, public pressure became so bad that uh, uh, Joel gave him twenty thousand dollars today. That's it, though. Wow. Twenty. Twenty grand. I know it was an accident. He found it, but he could have taken it. Yes, he could have. Except I think Papa Joel knows it's in there. Yes. Maybe it was a test. I'd always be leery of that. Yes. I'd think about taking it, and then I'd be like, no, this is a trap. He's a holy it's a test. Holy oh, my God. This one is amazing. Okay. We're going to do... This one's amazing. You said you had an update. No, I just... I had an update to that. That oh, Today, gotcha. Joel Osteen gave the 20 grand, but okay. only after... Everybody was like, what did he give you for being honest and returning it all? And he said nothing. And then everybody was like, every single thing Joel does, it takes three days of public pressure. When he said he wouldn't open his stuff and this and that. And yeah, Um, I'm not into the mega preacher, prosperity preacher thing, people. Yeah. I just, I, I don't believe people give them money. They have private jets. They have Lamborghinis. Jesus didn't have any of that. Barely had Crocs. And I think we all know that. <laughs> he could have used a pair of Crocs. Sandals hurt with that toe thing. Yeah. yeah. Real life Moby Dick spotted off the coast of Jamaica. No way. Yep. And there's videos which uh, which paddles will post. And Sean knows. It's amazing. A rare white sperm whale like the one depicted in what? Moby Dick has been spotted off the coast of Jamaica. Sailors aboard the Dutch oil tanker Coral Energy glimpsed the ghostly creature on November 29th when Captain Leo, somebody, somebody, recorded a short video highlighting a brief look at a white sperm whale near the water's surface. He sent the video to sailing partner so-and-so, director of the Whale uh, Conservation Charity in the Netherlands. After confirming with experts that the whale was indeed a sperm whale, they shared the video with the, on the organization's Facebook page. In Herman Melville's famous novel, Moby Dick, is a monstrous white sperm whale um, hunted by the vengeful Captain Ahab who lost his leg when he... Uh, leg to the toothed whale. The book is narrated, but we all know about the book. Um, we don't know how rare... We don't know how rare white sperm whales are, so it was said from the university of somewhere in Canada. Um, but they do seem... Um, but they do get seen from time to time. But the ocean's so expansive, it's super rare to ever see one. And it kind of makes you think like that, That you know, I think sometimes we look at books like that and think, oh, that that's bullshit, you know. Yeah. But I don't know. Um, the last documented sighting of a white sperm whale occurred in 2015 off the uh, Italian island of Sardinia. However, there have also been sightings in, the, in Dominica. In the Atlantic in recent years, it's possible that the one in Jamaica is the same one in Dominica, but that is unclear. So if you want to learn more about whales, you can read the rest of that article. It gets a little scientific for my taste, but just know there's a giant white. There's Mo- Moby Dick's real. Good to know. Pfft, great. Good news. Um, Here's, here's a jackass. <laughs> People 
you know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe this guy did it for a joke. I don't know. A man in Italy is facing charges of fraud. They're, and the Italians have taken COVID quite seriously. So I wouldn't fuck around with the system if I was one of them. Um, versus over here, if you did this, like, in the South, and just be like, that was hilarious. Go try it again. Somewhere else. Take your fake arm. This guy <laughs> was charged with fraud after trying to avoid the COVID shot by using a fake arm. According to the Guardian, the 50-year-old, Wait. he had on a fake arm. Okay. The 50-year-old showed up at a vaccine center with what may have been an entire fake arm or a silicone layer over his skin. The health worker initially failed to catch the man's bizarre tactic when he sat down for his shot. After she took a close look, however, Philippa Bua sensed something strange. She told the man to take his shirt off. That's when the plane, when the plan of the desperate anti-vaxxer fell apart, I felt offended as a professional. She told La, Repo- oh La Republic, "The color of the arm made me suspicious, so I asked the man to uncover the rest of his left arm. It was well made, but it wasn't the same color. See, he forgot to pick what shade. Right? It's oh trying to. It's like trying to buy makeup without actually doing it on your skin. You're never gonna match right. Health workers." Uh, wow. didn't specifically de- have detail. D- health workers didn't specify the details of the fake arm. Um, the, fake the man may have detailed his plan on a post seen on social media, the Twitter post, according. But see, the Italians that throw your ass in jail for this. Featured an individual of a man with a silicone chest and half a bodysuit along with fake arms. If I go with this, will they notice? Maybe beneath the silicone, I'll even put on some extra clothes to avoid the needle really reaching my arm, the social media user wrote. Italian Italy Italy recently announced that unvaccinated people will be barred from several social, cultural, and sporting events. The country has seen an increase in the number of vaccinated people making the announcement. The promptness and skill of the health worker ruined the plans of this person who will now have to respond to the judiciary. Uh, da, 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 da. So, yeah, he's going to be in trouble. But, I mean, how far will you go? And where do you buy a fake arm? I guess online. That's crazy. <laughs> I wish I knew him. I wish he was like a regular at my bar. So I'd go, how'd that, fa- how'd that fake arm deal work out? <laughs> Just the, how, how many days do you think you're going to spend in jail? How much uh, is the fine for fucking wasting these people's time? And how dumb were you that you didn't get the, get a few colors? Right. If you're going to buy the arm sight unseen, it's like buying makeup. I don't know. I'll get ivory, invisible, and nude. Those are usually my three. Invisible. invisible. Freckle cover or whatever. But this guy, you buy one color and just shove it on. Huh. Wonder why this guy has a brown arm and he's as pale as Kathleen. Mm. Wow. Speaking of that, speaking of Covidius, how c- crazy is this? A letter from Catherine the Great that urged mass immunization in 1787 just sold for over $1 million. Her letter was about smallpox, which what? We don't have. A letter from Catherine the Great dated April 20th, 1787, sold for $1.3 million at a London auction house. The Russian empress supported mass immunization against smallpox in the letter, a nod, a nod to how the country's longest ruling female leader could have seen vaccination, vaccinations in a pandemic era. Yeah, she's saying it then. This is how long the fighting has been going on. 1787, people are fucking doing it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in a letter which sold at McDougal's auction house in London, Catherine the Great instructs a governor general of the Ukraine to make immunization of the public a priority. This is what her letter said. She called the guy Count, Count Pyotr Alexandrov, along with the other duties of the welfare boards in the provinces entrusted to you. One of the most important should be the introduction of the inoculation against smallpox which we know causes great harm, especially amongst ordinary people. As compared to what? Royalty? (laughs) That's like Prince Harry telling people that if you quit your job, it's good for your mental health. You don't, you've never had a job. Stop talking about employment and acting like you did. (laughs) Holy God. Quit your job. No, I need to hear that from like a plumber. I don't need to hear that from Prince Harry or somebody who works their ass off like that. So, so she said 
she kept going in her letter. This is a translation. Obviously, I don't speak Russian. Such inoculation yeah. should be common everywhere, and it's now all the more convenient since there are doctors and medical attendants in nearly all of the districts, and it does not call for huge expenditure. The letter was also sold with a painting by Dmitry Levitsky, whatever. Um, but this is crazy. This part's crazy. Catherine the Great, who was immunized nearly 20 years before the letter she wrote, was one of the first people in Russia to be immunized against smallpox. However, millions of Russians still feared the procedure in the late 1700s. According to a 1984 article in what was then Bristol Medico something journal, at the time, smallpox immunization was called virulation proliferated, a process. This is what they did to inoculate you back, inoculate you back then. It's kind of gross. A process in which pus or scabs, oh. Oh, hold on, from a person with smallpox were introduced into the bloodstream of a patient. The person who underwent virulation would then develop a milder form of the disease and subsequently become immune after recovery. The process had a 2% death rate as compared to the minimal risk modern smallpox vaccine. Mm. Supporters of this meth method, not just Captain the Great, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, George Washington. Oh, great. All the smart people were on board. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to. Don't put a scab in me. No. 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 This, this one, well, first, this a little shout out to Kansas City, Missouri. You're getting a Whataburger. Boom. And you're not just getting one. You're getting 30. 30? Going to take a while. Yeah, I'm so excited for Kansas City because I never had them till Texas. Kansas City is right over the new location will open its doors. This is about the new one. It's all because Patrick Mahomes is from Texas and he said we need water burgers. I'm not saying that's the only reason they did it, but he's kind of the one who got it going. <laughs> the San Antonio based burger company announced in August its plans to open 30 franchise owned restaurants in Kansas City over the next seven years by way of Camo Burger, an investor led franchise group that, in that includes. Super Bowl MVP and Kansas City Chiefs player Patrick Mahomes. He said he wanted one. His wishes have come true. Um, he said he's super excited. There was a huge line. He said it didn't go that day. He didn't have time. That's right, because the Chiefs have been a little wobbly out there lately. You need to get your – if I saw my quarterback in, like, he's, like, 60 at the line at Whataburger and the Chiefs aren't really – being the Chiefs they can be, I'd be like, dude, I will wait for your burgers. You need to go to practice. Give me the keys to your car and get out. Switch cars. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So do not move the car. You're going to lose your place in line. Um, <laughs> all right. Mayor, oh, this one is so something I would accidentally do. Okay. Yep. Well, I won't because I have Steve, my bug man. Right. Steve, my killer. Right. Uh, like carpenter bees and stuff like that, I would call Steve. Yeah. But I also know Steve's afraid of snakes because he admitted that to me. He will. He'll have a friend come get him. I don't think, because I showed him this video of all these rattlesnakes under this house in Texas. There were like 200 or more. And even he was like, I couldn't even watch the whole thing. I'm like, yeah, but if that happens to my house, Steve, you're the guy I call. He goes, well, I'll get him. I'll get it done. But yeah. What started as an attempt to get rid of pesky, pesky creatures. Mm, I call snake little more pesky in my world. Heart attack inducing creatures is what I would call them. <laughs> and I know there's ones that aren't poisonous and they're good snakes. And da, 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 da. If there's a snake in my house, I'm gone. Right. Um, I don't care if it's, a, if, it's, if it's a talking snake that's the nicest thing ever <laughs> that speaks with a British accent, I'm leaving. Uh, what started with an attempt to get rid of a pesky creature ended with the entire house going up in flames. Oh. Uh, uh, a house of nearly 10,000 square feet. In Dickerson, Maryland, an hour west of Baltimore, was engulfed in flames on November 23rd. Oh, wow. When the homeowner tried to smoke out a snake infestation on the property. Oh, my God. Yeah. He said the snakes had been an ongoing issue for the owner and the previous tenant as well. Well, call someone. Well, but how do, don't you have to disclose that if you sold this house? It's worth a lot of money. Yeah. It's like a mil, over a million bucks. Oh, God. You got, don't you have to say, hey, or didn't an inspector, somebody... Maybe it was ask, winter and they were underground. Ask one of the realtor termites. Yeah, realtor termites. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know if there's a snake, if there's any kind of infestation? I think it was 
I would think you do. You have to disclose ghosts, and they're not even necessarily real. Right. Snakes are real. Are you a coals were used as a heat source for the smoke. Oh no, he used coals, and he placed them too. Uh, he placed them too close to combust combustible materials, eventually setting the house on fire. Oh, okay. On. The fire started in the basement and quickly spread through the, each floor, engulfing the multi-story home. Oh, the owner was home. Uh, at home a few hours before, but luckily no one was there at the start of the fire. Around 10 p.m., 75 firefighters showed up to the scene. There were no fire hydrants in the area, which isn't a problem because we're used to it, but we had to shuttle in uh, uh, tanks of water. The damages will be more than $1 million. The, re the house was recently purchased for $1.8. Oh, wow. uh, the status of the snakes is unknown, but the home was left in rubble. It's assumed they no longer live there. Um, That's not a good assumption. You don't know that. I wouldn't start rebuilding. No. Not until, I don't even know. I don't think I could do it because it's all I would think about. I mean, I would just, I'd just have to sell it for a lot less and go, I don't know. There might or may or may not be giant balls of snakes underneath here. Oh, God. Yep. <laughs> this is great news. This is great news. Frida Kahlo, one of my favorite artists in the whole world. And I went to Nashville to, when I was in Nashville, to see her um, exhibition at the Frist Museum. The Bill, as in Bill Frist, the former senator. Yeah. Uh, whatever, I wasn't a big Bill Frist fan. Um, <laughs> but, okay. but the museum is wonderful, and he's done a public good, so you have to applaud where applause should be given. Um, Frida's stuff hardly ever leaves private collections, in Me and it doesn't leave Mexico that often. And so if you ever get to see a Frida... Um, display exhibition, you should go. And it was great. And they had a lot of stuff down there, a lot. And then they even had like a display of the clothing she would have worn at that time. That's Some cool. of them were her clothes, but uh -huh. it was just a whole thing. It was a cultural thing. Plus they had, I think, eight to 12 of her paintings, shit tons of drawings. Wow. And then they did Diego, her lover, in the other part of the museum. It was just wonderful. But I always felt like Frida. <sighs> Did you ever see the movie with Selma Hayek? Yeah. That sums it up. For people who don't really care about art, but you just want to know about a crazy life. She had a crazy life. Um, that's a great movie to watch. Yeah. Fills you in. Don't need to know any much She's more. Um, I feel like Diego always made her feel like you're not the real talent in this family. I am. And then she'd break up with him, and he was just kind of controlling and bossy. And I always thought, his stuff is awesome. And he sometimes worked for the communists, so he would paint things that he was commissioned to paint. But whatever, they were still great. Mm -hmm. But her stuff was way better. Oh, yeah. Just saying. I love the colors. A self-portrait by the Mexican artist Frida Kahlo was sold for almost $35 million. Wow. Yep, at Saw the Bees in New York on Tuesday. The portrait titled Diego E. I can't say that. It's Diego and me. Um, had been a part of a private collection for almost 30 years. Who are these people? Right. Why do you want to have if it? you're on an airplane on Delta or somewhere else you can see it, go watch The Lost Leonardo mm -hmm. if you like these art stories. I just like them because there's so much money involved and there's heist. And now I know where they're all hiding. There's this thing called these free ports in Switzerland. It's by a dock and it's, it's warehouses that are, and it's a tax-free haven so you, it's all money laundering, all this art bullshit. I mean, some people may merely want them. There's a lot of money laundering going on. So you can spend $100 million and get it into another monetary system via the art, blah, blah. So you, you buy something. You buy it. Right. You, yeah. quote, bought it. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody, I've seen this painting a thousand times in books and everything else, not in real life, and... But some little jackass was hoarding this for 30 years from the public. I do not understand that. That's terrible. Frida was married to Mexican artist Diego Rivera, who previously held the record as the most expensive artwork from Latin America. Rivera's The Revival sold for $9.6 million in a 2019 auction. She beat him. They're dead, and she beat him. I love it. She is now the highest paid. She is the most expensive painting from Latin America. Boom! It it's took great. a while, but karma comes. Your Sadly, you're dead. That's my point with karma. How long are we supposed to wait on this shit? How about those karma wheels turn a little faster? But 
Um, people start unraveling the depth of Frida's art decades after her death, said so-and-so of the so-and-so. During her lifetime, the Mexican artist was never able to make a living through her paintings and only, had only two gallery shows while she was alive, which is so pathetic. Yeah. And one was in America, but it was with him. I mean, I know there was that one. And then the one she was on her deathbed, she literally made them pick up her bed and take her in her bed because the doctor said you can't go you can't even get out of bed she said fine which i thought had a lot showed a lot of hoods but um the 1949 self-portrait described as sotheby's as a masterpiece depicts the artist gazing at the viewer in a small portrait of diego right here in her forehead as her third eye it was painting during the same time as Carlos' then husband rivera started an alleged extramarital affair with actress Maria Felix. The painting is very similar, blah, blah, blah. Go look it up. Well, we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. It's worth looking at. The painting was sold for the first time for $1.3 million in 1990. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's like a million a year. I'm not that good at math, as we all know, but <laughs> it's been 90, 2000, 2010, 2000, about 30 years. Yeah. And now it's all for it's almost a million a year. Painting on a New York collector bought it the first time. You could call it, the, 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 it's the ultimate revenge, but in fact, it's the ultimate validation of Kahlo's extraordinary talent and global appeal. Okay, it's great news for Frida. I'm sorry you're dead, Frida, but I got you. <laughs> I, got you. <laughs> I got you. Good for you. Good for you. That's who Rocky Laporte would say. All right, this one is mind blowing. This guy should not be arrested. This man should be given a goddamn parade. And I mean a full-on parade. Like Ben Hogan, like Bobby Jones, like the Philadelphia Eagles when they win, the St. Louis Cardinals. This dude lived. A stowaway in landing gear travels from Guatemala to Miami. And I'm sitting there on a Delta flight bitching because they're out of goldfish. <laughs> Uh, America, somebody owes American Airlines some unpaid airfares. A stowaway managed to travel from Guatemala to Miami. The 26-year-old man was promptly arrested by the feds after being discovered in the wheel well of landing gear. Oh While this might seem like a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence, the truth is far from that. The November 27th incident is not the first time, nor will be the last, that someone tried to stow away in the landing gear of a plane. The particular individual is lucky to survive. Because if the altitude planes fly at, the amount of oxygen available is substantially lower than at ground level. Also, the temperatures are markedly lower. And by the way, there's a picture of the man. He basically has on a members-only jacket. No yeah. Holy shit. In 2014, a 16-year-old stowaway stowed away in the landing gear of Hawaiian Airlines jet traveling from San Jose to Maui. Oh, that's far. Yeah. Oh, my God. Jeez, that's crazy. Well, hold on. The, wait till you hear this shit. CNN reported that the temperatures at the altitude the blimp was flying at could get as low as minus 75 to minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Combined with the lack of, the oxy lack of oxygen, the FAA states this can cause stowaways to enter a kind of hibernation to try and survive. How does a human body survive that temperature for that long? They're saying we go into some sort of shock, yeah. like hiber hibernation state. Yeah. Even if they do live through the ordeal... It can cause severe damage to the body. When the stowaway Mau Maui case was found, he was stumbling around the tarmac in an apparent state of confusion and disorientation. We don't know if he ever made a full recover. Of course he's no. confused. Exactly. There's also another problem that comes into play with this state exactly. of unconsciousness. When the plane starts the landing process, the doors of the landing gear have to open. If, some, if someone is unconscious, they're likely to fall out of the plane as the doors open for the wheels to descend. Cases like this happened in 2010 and 1996. Given all that can go wrong in a stowaway attempt like this, it's a miracle that anyone can survive it. Correct. Why would you give this kid all this shit? If you do this and you make it, parade. Yeah. I don't want to encourage it. No. I mean, no. From 1947 to 2000 F 2014, the FAA reported 105 attempts of people to tra traveling as stowaways in the landing gear of a plane. The UK Civil Aviation Authority has also reported from 2004 to 2015 six stowaway cases. The 26-year-old Guatemalan, he was, <laughs> it's not funny, no. but I just keep thinking of when I got 
one of the cats fixed. And it came home. No, and it was like drunk, and its eyes were rolling because it had anesthesia, and it thought it had shit together. Um, and it was a little cat. It, it was the cutest thing ever, but I've never seen a cat seem not on it. Right. Just drunk, like her eyes kept rolling back in her head. She's like, hey, wow, wow. Basically, this guy entered the state of, it's, it's crazy. He was found dazed in a state of mental confusion. He was taken to a hospital observation as of yet there are no further details. Despite his actions being incredibly reckless and illegal, we do hope he's able to recover with no long-lasting effects on his health. Wow. Yeah. I mean, 75. I had, that's, that's no, crazy. it was like another couple interesting facts on all that, but I think they're all, that was the better article of the ones I found. It is crazy. I mean, that's how desperate he is to get to America. Yeah. And, if you take your life into your own hands, I don't know. People go, you're in charge of illegal behavior. I, I know. I know. But he did it. Wow. That's All right, this one makes me laugh. I'm going to do this one and then one more, and then we have to be done. Because I have to hang Christmas lights before it gets dark. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. I have about half before that. This makes me laugh. <laughs> do you want to sound more confident? Avoid these 11 words and phrases that make you look weak, says a grammar expert. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. So this is, they're just so rudimentary, right? But yet, I, I don't even agree with half of them. Um, wow. If you want to get ahead, along with simple replacements, it will make a big difference in how you're perceived. Okay. Number one, does that make sense? Here's what you should say instead of, does that make sense? You should say, what are your thoughts? I'd like your input on this. Sometimes I go, does that make sense? Because I think you're, you're a moron. You're a moron. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but I'm not confident with what I'm saying. Right. I'm not going, does that make sense? Because I know that's, that's conveying, I don't really know. Right. Sometimes I go, does that make sense? Right. It's tone, tone. Right. They forgot to. Totally. Then number two, don't ever say, maybe we should try. Instead say, let's try, or it's a good idea to try. No. No, I like it better than yeah. yeah. Maybe we should try is meaning I'm cooperating and I'm participating. I'm throwing an idea. It's welcome to be bat back at me. Right. It's a good idea to try. Yeah, that just sounds too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Number three, I think this would. You're never supposed to say, I think this would. You're supposed to say, I believe this would. I feel like Elizabeth Holmes has read this thing 55 times and memorized it. Because no matter what question they ask her, hey, is it true you ran over your cat on purpose and killed it? She just goes, yeah, yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your question. Shut up. <laughs> You're supposed to say I believe this word. This is a minor distraction, but a valid one. I think sounds weaker than I believe. I don't agree with that. Believe means... If I say, I think this will work, it means all of my brain power has said, yes, this will work. Believe means I have faith, which is not as strong as a thought. True. Yep. I don't, I think this person is backwards. <laughs> Number four, you should never say, I'm not positive, but, or I'm not sure, but, what to, is what you're supposed to say and said. Whatever you were going to say after the but. You don't need disclaimers. Similarly, if you start your sentence with, I know this might be a stupid question, or I don't want to sound pushy, you're undermining yourself. All right. Okay. I'd go with that one. Number five, I just wanted to touch base. I hate it when people say that. I hate it. It became a thing like 10 years ago. And the tag, you're it. Oh, stop. I just wanted to touch base. What to say instead is, I wanted to touch base. No, let's lose touch base. Right. They're the morons here. I don't care if you say I just wanted to touch base or I wanted to touch base. How many times have you started an email with, just wanted to ask you, the problem with the case is not the just as a softener, almost an apology. It's if you're saying, I hate to bother you, but there's a time and a place for that. But business communications generally aren't. Once again, comedians do not <laughs> communicate like comedians that. Comedians do not no. communicate like business people. Right. I think we get to the point faster, though. You do. Number six. Shocking. Needless to say, 
what you should say instead of that is don't say anything. <laughs> Needless to say, it comes from a long line of iconic phrases, ironic phrases where the opening top by you open a topic saying you're not going to say something and then say it anyway. So why did you do it? I do get annoyed with needless to say, then don't say it. I agree. I get annoyed with long story shorter. By the time you've said that, it's too goddamn long. A lot of people say that. Anyway, to make a long story longer, a short, yeah, to make a short story longer, you've already done all that. The fact that you have to edit out loud your story as you're telling it tells you there's a problem with your story. And you should stop talking and go, you know what? My brain is not working right. I'll get back with you on that. <laughs> Number eight, don't say for what it's worth. You should say nothing instead of that. Because this is another intro that makes it sound like if you're not convinced yourself, I don't know. I've had people say for what it's worth to me and then follow it with a piece of valuable information. It may not have seemed valuable to them, but it might have been to me. They're just saying, hey, man, I'm going to throw something in the hat. It's probably invaluable, but it might be to someone. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Nine, sorry. What you should say is excuse me. <laughs> no. I don't think so. No. It's fine to apologize if you've done something wrong and need to own up to it, but, but too many people say sorry and wind up weakening their image. Who, who does this person think we're all trying to be? Right. Elizabeth Holmes? What to say? Why say sorry to bother you when it's simple? Excuse me is a shorter, snappier, and less self-deprecating. Wow. <laughs> By the time I get to that point, if you hear me on the other end of the phone going, yeah, I don't want to bug you, but it's gone way, way, way too far. Way too far. Psychologist success suggests that people tend to think those overuse I'm sorry are ineffectual and lack confidence. If you need more convincing, keep in mind that from the 13th century, the word sorry was meant <laughs> wretched or worthless. Well, it still means that in certain sentences. Right. Look at your sorry ass. I don't mean <laughs> that you're sorry. sorry I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number 10. X was developed to increase X. Okay. Uh, what you're supposed to say is, I developed X to increase X. With the passive voice, the subject has something has something done to it. With the active, the subject is doing the action. So if you created a new marketing campaign to increase brand awareness, why not use the active voice and take credit for it up front? Huh. All right, that's not in my realm. No. No. 11, if you know what I mean. What to say instead? Nothing. Right? Move on. I don't know. I think that's a valuable sentence sometimes. We've seen so many people in, se in sentence with, if you know what I mean. Or it's truncated with, know what I mean? If you want. <laughs> well, now it's just truncated to, right? It's right. Right? Right? Right. It's a filler phrase that means nothing. And it actually irritates a lot of people. Along the same lines, avoid starting a sentence with puffy phrases like, it's important to know. All you're doing is adding useless words. Know what we mean? <laughs> I just like to read what the corporate world is thinking <laughs> is really happening out there. Um, oh, my God. I'm going to save that. That's it. This is what we're going to end with. Okay. I think it's a good. Here's what would be my favorite idea, because I've watched, by the way, I've been watching. If you can see on a plane, the Lost Leonardo, also there's a thing. I think <sighs> It's called 100 Foot Wave. I, don't, I saw it on a plane. I don't right. know where you find it on real TV. Okay. If you like, I like surfing and all that, and... I like waves. I just like the power of nature. And there's a um, city in Portugal, HBO Max. Nueve, I think it's called. HBO Max. HBO Max. And Amazon Prime. What is, Nazare is the town mm -hmm. that has. And Amazon Prime. And Amazon Prime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Has some of the biggest waves in the world. And uh, I don't really ever understand how surfers have money. Um, I don't know if I could live that lifestyle. But, I mean, I know they have sponsors and stuff. But they, and they're really into it. They're very serious people, though. Not a lot of funny surfers. And I don't mean ha ha funny. I mean, they're just, they're intense. But look what they're doing. They're going to go ride a 100 foot wave. I guess you can't be a jackass. You can't be sitting around like me going, do we have any more goldfish? It's the only snack I like out of the pile of bullshit that is given out on airplanes. Okay. I love goldfish, period. Yeah. Even if it wasn't the only one, it'd be what I'd pick.
Oh, my glasses. Jackal up Brewing Company, Nashville, Tennessee. I didn't really notice. Drink legendary. Yeah. I used to send my nieces and nephews every postcard I could find a jackalope. And then I'd make them, like Texas, they have a lot of postcards of the jackalope. And then I'd tell them that I would give them $20 if they could find it. Oh. <laughs> I'd always give them the $20. But they like the thrill of it. And they're like, wait, they're real. Especially in Missouri. Yes, they're real in Missouri. They're giant hairs, and they have tiny racks of horns. This is... Okay, so I've been watching a lot of the... I love the Hallmark movies. I love the Lifetime movies. For the record, for you guys who don't, I, I do like to drink during these, and I have code things for drinking, and I, um, my mom loves them, my sister loves them, blah, 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 because they're so cheesy and campy. I'm having a tough time watching anything with Candace Crème Brulee. I don't know that I can do that. I, I've tried to tolerate the offstage behavior to a certain point. Christian-y, I get it, I get it, do what you want. And then it became, my, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's not, uh. And every year these people get thinner. Everybody at auditioning at the Hallmark thing should be taken to a hospital for anorexia. <laughs> I mean, they're so goddamn. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Lifetime. Hallmark is super clean. Hallmark Mysteries and Movies, you can drink alcohol in those. And you can kiss. You can't go all in. Right. No French kissing. Do they show the kiss? They'll show a kiss. Yeah. yeah, but it's not a hot kiss. It's just yeah. like, oh, it's the end. It's always the end. <laughs> My favorite ones are where there's a prince of a made-up country. Like, <laughs> oh, we're in Matagovia. Right. And it's the home of Madigans. <laughs> um, here's my pet peeve. Uh -huh. If you guys watch them too. And if you don't, just ignore this part of this. I, and it's not just in these Christmas movies. It's in all movies, but it's really bad in the Christmas movies. They pick up coffee, and they're empty. Yeah. There, there's no way. People just grab their coffee like, I don't even have anything light enough on the desk to do it. They'll just be like, oh, thanks, and they run away. Right. Do you, there's coffee in there. What do you do? Because there's, there's no coffee in there, the actor's not careful. And they just swing it around. One lady went in for a four-pack of, like, giant, yeah. giant drinks and went, oh, but no, you don't have to open the door. I'm like, yeah, you do. You need both paws on that thing. That is going all over your beautiful white coat. I'm obsessed with their coats, too, because one lady will go on a just a whimsical trip, and she'll have, like, seven coats, long ones, like white. Who wears white? Come, How rich do you have to be to walk around? Uh, well, I have one white ski jacket because I don't ski. I just sit in a chalet. It will never be destroyed. If you could combine the ID channel with the Hallmark channel and, like, halfway through somebody murders Cameron Scramboulet's character, I think that would be the ultimate combination of channels. Wow. Yep. <laughs> yeah. This is the ultimate in America. A Michigan woman, what you doing up there, Michigan? I'm coming to Detroit in January. A Michigan woman tried to hire an assassin online at what? Rentahitman.com. Now she's going to prison. Oh, my God. She's not going to the electric chair. I'm sure you're sad about that, Paddles. Seething and venging, vengeful. Wendy Ween was on the lookout for a professional killer she meant to hire as she waited inside a southern Mich southeast Michigan, Michigan cafe in July 2020. This is last summer. Mm -hmm. she, she wanted her ex-husband dead, but she didn't want to murder him herself, and she didn't know anyone she trusted to do it for her. So she did what a lot of people do when they have a job and they can't, can't or don't want to do it themselves. She searched for help on the Internet oh. on, quote, rentahitman.com. That's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, the website promised confidentiality. It boosted an industry. It boosted of industry awards. <laughs> wow. What industry is right. it? Yeah, Murder. Right. It showed thousands. It showed off testimonials of satisfied customers. Come on. I mean, come on. <laughs> Who could? It's murder. It's not carpet cleaning, including one from Laura S. Who she her testimony was she caught her husband cheating with the babysitter, so she killed. She had him murdered. The website bragged about complying with HIPAA, which is defined as the Hitman Information Privacy and Protection Act of 1964, a nod to the health one that we all sign off of, your HIPAA rights, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, where the HIPAA law passed in 1996 to protect patients' medical information. The trouble for her was that the Reddit Hitman's website is fake. 
It's not run by Guido Finale. It says it's run by Guido Finale, but it is run by Bob Inez, a 54-year-old Northern California man who forwards any serious inquiries to law enforcement. He launched the site 16 years ago as part of an internet security business that never went anywhere. Instead, it served as a honeypot of sorts, attracting people who want to hire professional killers. And it did not go well for this lady. She was arrested within days of seeking out an assassin and pleaded guilty earlier this month to the solicitation of murder and using a computer to commit a crime on her appointment. Oh, my God, on her plea agreement. She faces at least nine years in prison when she's sentenced in January. You will definitely, termites, get an update on that. <laughs> I don't know. There's certain things where you have to be able to just claim stupid. Yes. You know, I'm a moron. she's not the only one who's got stuck in his digital trap. About 600 to 700 people have contacted him since he first registered the website in 2005, including some 400 who, like Ween, filled out the application, uh, filled out his service request form, which requires them to give you give your name, email address, phone number, along with some information of their target. Sure. White red he vets the he vets the entries, which come in a clip of about eight to ten to ten a month. Eight to ten people a month are falling for this testimonials. I love rentahitman.com. I hated my neighbor Jim. This guy would never put his shit away. Everything looked like a shit show. He was sort of a hoarder. I called the I called Metro oh Codes. Nobody god. did anything. Oh my god. Oh my God. He, the guy who did the website, he goes, I don't get it. He told the Washington Post, people are just stupid. He launched it, not it was a way to catch criminals, it was a possible business venture, blah, blah, blah. We don't care about all that. In June, he was getting ready to graduate from college. He decided to put the domain main up for auction. Nobody offered him any money. So he just left it on autopilot and forgot about it. Then he opened it up, and there's all these idiots that think it's for real. And they want to pay him to go kill people. That's ridiculous. Mm hmm. Kind of this poor guy, he's like, these people were serious. I really wasn't prepared for any of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It goes on and on and on. Yeah. This lady, there was another lady that was hell-bent on having three people murdered. Um, yeah, it, it's a great, we'll put the link to the it's article. It's a great holiday story. It's a wonderful holiday story. <laughs> <laughs> Rentahitman.com. Hey, you know, I lost my husband a few years ago. What happened? Well, I had him murdered. <gasps> How did you do that? Well, rent to hitman.com. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, rent to... Sounds like a mattress store. Yeah, rent a pulley if you need one to get something out of your thing. Yeah, all right, I'm going to save the rest of these stories. There's one about Canada releasing 500 million pounds of syrup because the shit's getting weird. Are you, uh, you going to review holiday movies or something? I'll review some holidays movie. I'll tell you right now, there's one about an Irish castle. With that lady, Lacey, somebody, it's really good. Although, may I say to Lifetime, I believe it was Lifetime. The green screens, and if you don't know what that is. It was Hallmark. It's, it was at Hallmark. Mm -hmm. That's fancy Hollywood talk for when they don't want to spend the money on a background. They just get a clip of a background. You as the actor go into place and there's a green, an actual green screen behind you. Mm -hmm. You stand out and act your scene. And then they put it. Film, on you're film, actually. you're in a car going like this. <laughs> the green screens of Ireland were so pathetic. <laughs> like the castle would look like uh, like Legos. Like, yeah. come on, there's actual spend a nickel lifetime flat Ireland. Get some footage. It's five hundred bucks from from JFK if you sit and coach. <laughs> Air Lingos will give you all the drinks you want. Get your ass over there with the cameraman. Send the children. Right. The young people. Me and Lorene ain't going on this shit anymore. Lorene does all kinds of programs on television that you would know. Wicked Tuna. Lorene sends the children, and then she she bosses the children around because we've earned that right. Lifetime. Go get two 27-year-olds and send them with cameras. Film some bullshit. It's called B-roll. Yeah. Oh. It's, there's a couple of them where they're riding horses, and you're like, oh. I mean, it's 2021. It does not have to look like that, and it no. doesn't cost that much money. Uh -uh. <laughs> I say that, and I don't know that. Lorene would probably be like, well, Smalls, you just overstepped there, and it's a lot more than that, but I don't know. <laughs> All right, termites. I'll have more holiday reviews. Um, I haven't really seen – I saw a boring one. Sometimes I like a lot of contra – I like princes. I like royalty ones. I don't like um, when there's not enough controversy or drama. When it's just, are two people going to fall in love or not, or should they not? I need a lot more than that. 
Or he watched one about a country singer on his way to Tulsa. And then he met a lady on the bus. And then I put a, I put a video up of this family scene at the end. And if, first of all, it's in, supposed to be in, quote, Joplin, Missouri. And I'm like, um, these people look a little more Utah, if you know what I'm saying. A little more Mormon-y. Um, just, yeah, that, oh, now it's my brother, Patrick. Maybe they decided what's happening. Don't they know I have a job? Yeah, I'll call him back first. Are you? Um, I have to call Lewis back. Uh, are you He's in Florida. Would you like to go see my friend Lewis Black? He'll be performing in Florida. Where are you going? Where am I going? Uh, well, I'm going to Aspen, Colorado, and then coming up in January for sure. I know I'm going to Columbus and Cleveland. What? What? Detroit. What? What? Um, something in between that. I can't remember. Oh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. But the problem is on my website, it says Mun Hall, and some people don't know that that means Pittsburgh. I should have put Pittsburgh. I'll put Pittsburgh. But then the Mun Hall people will be like, well, you do that. You know, they'll be hurt. Their feelings will be hurt. I don't know. Whatever, yeah. people. I can only do so much. I can't put out maps. I can't. San Antonio, can, Houston. San Antonio, Houston. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited to go to Houston. Ninfas. It's the best Mexican restaurant. Durham, San Antonio, they place I, that place I drink at late at night. I can never remember the name. And I'm not even going to say it because I don't want it to get popular. Durham and Charlotte. Durham and Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Both. Why? North Carolina barbecue. I'm mm-hmm. so excited. St. Louis. St. Louis, home. That's always a lot of extra work for me. But the after party is worth it. And it's nice to go home. Denver two shows and filming a special for what? Amazon. Amazon. Oh yeah, because the first one was technically sold out, and then the second one, but they're going to release a bunch of seats because it depends on where cameras go. And if you're worried about being at a taping being weird, don't be weird. It will not be weird. And there's a very special guest opening that I will not reveal. It'll be worth um, it. It'll be worth it. And uh, Sometimes TV tapings, if you've been to a sitcom or something, they're just a little off-putting because it's too bright. I don't even allow any of that. It feels like a regular show, and that is my goal, to make it feel like 1,000%. And then I always get yelled at by not my friend Loreen, but other people when Loreen is busy have directed things, and they're like, we really need to line up the crowd more. I'm like, no, we don't. No, we don't. Well, there's not enough lighting on you. Who cares? We're good. I don't care. I want it to look like you're at the show. I don't want it to look like I'm at the Price is Right going, oh, I think the refrigerator's worth $384. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be that bright. The termite t-shirts will be in the... Oh, by the way, and thank you for all the termites that bought your Pub Guys t-shirts. I've gotten all your tweets with your pictures of them. Some people have modeled them. Nice. I, they fit really well. Yeah. One lady was very, very thin, yeah. very pretty lady. She, I think she got a medium, and I must say, spot on. Yeah. They'll be on the website like the 18th. Oh, yeah, the new ones because those all sold out, which was great and unexpected. Uh, we will, I reordered them, mm-hmm. and um, they, they should be available like the 18th. I don't know how the quick the they guys, the they will not, they can't get them out. Some of them might, though. You not never know. Sure, Maybe there'll be a Christmas miracle. <gasps> <laughs> Maybe music today, the company that does will provide a Christmas miracle. Wouldn't that be so wonderful? No guarantees, termites. I don't care. Guarantee Christmas miracles, but you know, weirder things have happened. All right, that's it. Termites. Be good. Termites. Be holiday termites. Be What's a holiday termite. A holiday termite means you're extra nice, and you're having extra fun, even if you're not. <laughs> Go be a holiday termite. Come on now. I'm a holiday termite. All right, holiday termites. That's it. And we're gonna be in holiday mode till till New Year's March. Eve. March. I know. I don't even feel like I get a Christmas. All I got to do is travel. Oh. Travel. I'm so sick of packing. I'll buy you a beer. I'm so sick of hating my clothes. I don't even have time to shop. Like, I need, I don't know. Tar- I'm tired of my jeans. I'm tired of everything. Okay. Except my act. Yeah. I have a lot of new jokes. That's not very holiday termite-like. Well, no, it's just saying I got to get online. <laughs> Maybe on the flight to bumfuckery I can get online if Delta could get that Wi-Fi working. <laughs> Yeah. All right. mm-hmm. Go decorate your ship. Just know, Delta, I'm a million miler. And I love you. But there have been a few glitches lately. And this lady, one or the other, food or internet. <laughs> Can't 
both. Can of both go down. Uh, were there drinks? Uh, there were drinks, but it's not like it used to be. Yeah. No. Were you judged? Mm, I was judged on the flight from Utah. I think yeah. we know why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The rest of the flights, I was not judged. And it wasn't an outward judge. It was subtle. Yeah. So you can't, can't, you know, I just felt it. Because the fun ones, yeah. when you're done with that drink, we'll go, you want another one? <laughs> and they sound like the devil. And you go, that's my people. And the other ones, they just look at it and pick it up. And then I have to go, hey, is there a way I could uh, get another one of those drinks? And then they go, oh, <laughs> do you, you want two? Yeah, that'd be another one. I have only had another. That, I had that one, and I haven't had any others. So one more. I suck at math, but I'm targeting on two. All right, termites. I gotta go hang out Christmas lights before it gets dark and absolutely freezing. It's already cold. So cold. I gotta bundle up. Okay. Be holiday termites. Night night holiday termites.